My name is David Heffelfinger. It says here that I'm the CTO of Enso Technology, LLC. A um, little bit about that. Uh, Enso Technology is a very small company based in Washington, D.C. It's so small it has only one employee. That's me. Uh, a few years ago, you know, I decided to go the independent consultant route. So I had to create my own company for that. So I got to pick my own uh, job title. So CTO, it is. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to be talking about two different things here. One is how Glassfish has helped me personally in my career as a consultant. And another thing is a specific project that I've been working on with a client for the past couple of years. Um, I've actually written a couple of books on Glassfish. One covers Java AE5. The other one's Java AE6. I'm currently working on the Java AE7 version. Unfortunately, didn't make this slide earlier because it's not out yet. Um, a couple of years ago, a client um, hired me to help them build an, a new application, new Java Enterprise application. Um, this client, they had an existing application running on an older application server, uh, J2E 1.4, and upgrading the application server was not even on the radar. They just wanted to use the same app server they had for the new application. So I tried to convince them to upgrade the app server, and I told them how the new APIs are so much easier, not, not as much configuration, uh, development goes a lot faster, you know, things like that. But these guys were not technical people. I was talking to managers, and I was kind of going over their head. They didn't really get what I was saying. So what I did was I wrote a very early prototype of the application that they wanted, just a couple of pages, and using Glasses and Java EE, um, I use prime faces for the front end. Um, any other uh, JSF component library will have worked rich faces or ice faces, but I happen to pick prime faces. And if you guys have experience with these libraries, you know that you can create very nice looking applications with very little effort. And their existing application, although very robust and very functional, it wasn't the prettiest thing. You know, it's just basic HTML with a little bit of CSS here and there. So when they saw this, they really liked the looks. And I told them, hey, you know, if you want the new application to look like this, you have to upgrade your application server. So based on the look of the application only, I was able to convince them, hey, whatever works, right? <laughs> you know? So one challenge that we had with this application was that we had to deliver the first version in three weeks. And this was a pretty big enterprise application. Now, we had a big team. We had about 30 developers. But not everybody was as experienced as I would have liked. You know, um, a lot of the developers were just familiar with the older technologies that they were using on their existing application. Um, we had a couple of people that were .NET developers, and they were just starting with Java. So even though we had a big team, it was not the most experienced team. But one thing that really helped, we were actually to, uh, able to pull it off. We delivered in three weeks. And one thing that helped a lot was the NetBeans Blastfish integration. Yeah. As you code, there's, there's deploy on save, so the code gets deployed. You keep your session across redeployment, so <coughs> development moves a lot faster. You know? With a traditional or with other app servers, we have to build, deploy. Every time you test, you have to log in and navigate to where you were, so it takes some time. So that was a big, big help. Um, this application, we're still working on it, maintaining it. Um, we have a development server, which is a single instance of Glassfish. We have, in production, we have a cluster with two nodes. And we have a UAT environment, user acceptance testing, that mirrors production. It's also a cluster of um, two, two nodes. Uh, again, still, the NetBeans Glassfish integration is a big help um, to help us uh, speed up development. Okay, like, like I mentioned, the NetBeans integration, big help. Uh, another thing that, that really worked with Glassfish was with other app servers, when somebody new, a new developer joins the team, you have to set them up, you have to set, all, uh, set up all this JDBC connection pools and, and JMS resources and what have you. So it takes some time to get somebody up to speed. Uh, Glassfish has this command like tool, asadmin or asadmin, that can be scripted. 
So you can write a script to set up all these resources, and you can get somebody up to speed in no time. Um, personally, the, the fact that Glassfish uh, is a reference implementation for Java AE, you know, it implements all these APIs before anybody else. Um, for those of you that don't know, I've written a couple of books, actually I did mention it, on Glassfish. So when a new version comes out, I pretty much immediately start working on a book and even if my customers, you know, as a consultant, are not using Glassfish, still the fact that I'm working with Glassfish helps me because other app servers kind of lag. It takes some time before they implement the latest API. So by the time they get up to speed, I've already been working with the latest API for a while, so I already have some experience. So if they're looking for a consultant, that kind of gives me a leg up on the competition. Okay, so um, what could be better? For this project that, that I've been working on for the last couple of years, um, a while back one of the developers on the team asked me if there was a way that Glassfish could run some code periodically without human intervention every 24 hours. I said, sure, you know, take a look at the EJB timer service. And you know, I gave him some resources online so he could learn. He developed his um, Singleton session being with the timer API, which he deployed to his own environment, it worked fine. Worked to the development server, it worked fine. When we go to UAT, this is the cluster environment, there was a problem. So he comes back to me, what is going on here? So I looked into it, and it turns out that Glassfish stores some information on the database for the EJB timer service. And by default, it goes to the Java DB uh, database that comes with Glassfish, which works fine in a single you know, instance of Glassfish, but when you have a cluster, each node has its own uh, instance of the database, so it can get out of sync. So you know, I had to look into that, and the solution is to point a JDBC resource to a database that is shared um, in the cluster. So unfortunately, I don't have a good suggestion on how to improve this, but that is a gotcha that I'm sure other people have run into. So it'd be better you know, if we could somehow <laughs> uh, warn people that they need to do that extra step before deploying uh, the AJB timer service to uh, a cluster. Um, one thing that I've noticed, uh, guys that are just starting with Glassfish get a little overwhelmed with the web-based admin console. There's a tree with a lot of options there, so it's kind of hard to find what you're looking for. Um, maybe implement a search, kind of like NetBeans has that. Even if you don't know where it is, you can type in you know, JDBC and your JDBC configuration comes up. Um, as far as future plans, I'm working on Java EE7 book with Glassfish. And as far as the project is concerned, we're looking to migrating uh, to Glassfish 4. And that's it. If there's any questions? <laughs>